Okay, now let's talk about the silent mutation. We have seen different types of point mutation, like you know, missense mutation, nonsense mutation. But in silent mutation, it is a type of missense mutation, but it will not change much in the phenotypic level. Because you know, in missense mutation, there is any change in the base pair, any change in the nucleotide, which will produce different type of amino acid than the compared to the normal one. But in this case, change in the nucleotide will not change the type of amino acid they produce normally. That's why they are called silent because the effect of mutation will remain silent in the cell, right? So let's see the example. Here we have a stretch of uh, different codons, like say TAC, GGT, AGT, and CAA. This stands for different types of amino acids. For example, TAC produces, I mean, methionine, GGT add proline, AGT add serine, and CA add valine into the during the protein synthesis pathway. Now let's imagine there is any kind of problem with this third codon of here. Instead of A, so actually, let me put here. Instead of A, there is mistakenly a T inserted during the DNA replication process or transcription process whatever mainly say during the replication process because in transcription there won't be any T there will be U anyways so this is it so if that thing happens what it does actually it change the codon at this last part so here at last what we have instead of CA we have a CA T that is the change rest of the things will remain the same Right? So now, during this change, we have already seen this change in case of nonsense mutation, in case of missense mutation. In missense mutation, we have seen this kind of change will change the amino acid, and as a result, the protein structure will change, protein function will change. But here, this change will not reflect into the protein structure. Why? Because here, instead of TAC, we have, in, you know, for the TAC, we have methionine, for the GGT, we have proline, for the AGT, we have serine. And the CAT will also code for valine. Now that is a weird stuff. Because CA codes for valine, CAT also codes for valine. That is called the Wubel hypothesis. Because you know, in if you look at the genetic code table, you will find in the third part, in the third position of any genetic code, position number one, two, and three, this third position can be changed but it will remain the same for adding the amino acids. For example, CA, CAT and I think CTA for example, I exactly don't know but these two things, you know, both first and second are conserved. The last one will be varied from AT and we can also vary for C. So whatever it is in the last part will not change the amino acid sequence. That happens in the codon always. So, if there is any kind of mutation probably in the third part or the wobble position of the codon, it might lead to the chance of producing a silent mutation because again they add valine previously the, for the normal protein they should have add valine, here they also should have add valine. So, the proteins they produce will be exactly the same, the proteins will be exactly the same. So, you can't distinguish between those proteins by looking at them. Their functionality will be the same. But even though there is a mutation in the genetic level, the protein structure and function will both be the same. That is why it is called silent mutation because you cannot predict the outcome. You cannot predict the mutation by looking at the outcome because actually we predict mutation by looking at phenotypic effects. So, there are certain mutations in our body which can occur without showing any considerable amount of phenotypic expression. And one example is this silent type of mutation which can do that.